Holt and welcome to QUT News. Hello. The Australian girlfriend of Las Vegas mass shooter has spoken out for the first time. Mary Lou Danley's lawyer read her statement outside FBI headquarters. Investigators still hope Danley can provide the missing link to Stephen Paddock's motive. But they've not yet ruled out that there may be other people of interest. Mary Lou Danley flew into Los Angeles International Airport and was detained by the FBI for questioning about the Las Vegas mass shooting. The 62-year-old former Gold Coast resident was labelled a person of interest yesterday. Today, she made her first statement since the attack, speaking through her lawyer. I knew Stephen Paddock as a kind, caring, quiet man. She said Paddock flew her to her birth country of the Philippines and sent her more than $100,000. While there, he wired me money, which he said was for me to buy a house for me and my family. Paddock used Danley's identification card while checking into the Mandalay Bay Hotel suite, where he later committed the massacre. Danley insists she was unaware of his intentions. It never occurred to me in any way whatsoever that he was planning violence against anyone. Police say there's still no motive for the attack in which 59 people were killed and more than 500 others injured. Ashley Press, QUT News. And later in the bulletin, President Trump meets those who lost loved ones in the shooting massacre. Fighting terrorism was on the agenda in Canberra today. A special meeting of state and territory leaders gave their support to a range of tough new national security measures. But the Prime Minister insists Australians won't be under mass surveillance. Meeting with premiers and chief ministers, the Prime Minister hoped to strengthen counter-terror measures across the nation. I want to thank you for the consistent commitment to keeping Australians safe. The meeting agreed to establish a national face matching service. It will hold all passport and driver's licence information so terror suspects can be more quickly identified. It's been operating, I think as we know, in a rather clunky, old-fashioned, manual way. The Queensland Premier welcomed the move. She's already pledged $100 million towards counter-terror measures for next year's Commonwealth Games. This is about people's safety and security, and there is nothing more important. The leaders also agreed to double the time a terror suspect can be detained without charge. Notional considerations of civil liberties do not trump the very real threat, the very real threat of terror. I want to be a Premier that has a no regrets policy. I don't want to look back and think what could I have done uh, differently or more to protect the community. Labor also wants the national gun amnesty extended in the wake of the Las Vegas massacre. I think we need to extend it uh, and I also think that we need to put our foot down. 28,000 firearms have been surrendered to police during the three-month amnesty. Bryce Heaton, QUT News. Queensland property developers will be banned from making cash donations to all local and state political candidates. The commitment follows a damning Crime and Corruption Commission report, but it's not yet known when the new rules will take effect. The message is clear. Developer donations aren't welcome anymore. The Palaszczuk government plans to ban developer donations to prevent perceived conflicts of interest for elected officials. The Attorney-General says candidates so have an obligation to be transparent. The community expects you to be open and to disclose where your donations are coming from um, and uh, who, are those, who are those donors um, and how much are they donating. The Attorney-General says the Palaszczuk government has been committed to reforms from day one. We are about transparency and accountability and about ensuring that the people of Queensland have confidence in the political system and the electoral system. The Local Government Association of Queensland has welcomed the report, supporting all but two of the recommendations. Greg Hallam remains unconvinced the ban and forcing conflicted councillors out of meetings will solve every problem. We believe a blanket ban on developer donations will simply drive things underground. It'll be less transparent. The best disinfectant is sunlight. The Premier says she will address more key reforms in the coming days. However, none of these are likely to take effect ahead of the state election, expected to occur before Christmas. Natalie Brown, QUT News. The trial of a man accused of the brutal bashing murder of a Korean woman in Brisbane's CBD has been abandoned. Alex Rubin McEwen had pled not guilty to murdering 22-year-old Yoon Ji-ban in 2013. 
Today, the jury, jury was asked to decide the future of the trial due to questions surrounding McEwen's mental health. After four hours' deliberation, they found the accused was not of sufficiently sound mind to continue. Police are investigating a Ute fire north of Sydney, which put three men in hospital. It was one of a number of serious incidents on our roads. An exploding can of tyre cleaner caused this fire near Narimba on the New South Wales central coast. Two brothers and a friend were trapped in the ute, with emergency services rescuing them a short time later. The driver sustained burns to 20% of his body and all three are being treated at the Royal North Shore Hospital. Meanwhile, a woman is fighting for life after an excavator was involved in a hit and run at Bowen Hills early this morning. She's undergone emergency surgery and is in a critical condition. Police are talking to the 58-year-old driver. And in Windsor, a man was hit by a car when crossing Bowen Street. The 70-year-old man was struck by an SUV at around 7 o'clock last night. He's in the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital in a critical condition. Mark Zita, QUT News. A new mango king has been crowned with Queensland's first box of mangoes selling at auction. The winning bid of $29,000 came from the owner of Fruity Capers in Tawong. At $29,000, selling, going, going. That is all. Congratulations to you. Local celebrities Jeff Horn and Sam Thiday also squared off in a mango eating competition and it was a close battle. The auction is the official start of the mango season. Some of Brisbane's talented young fashion designers have shown their cutting edge pieces on a pop-up runway in the Queen Street Mall. It's a competition with a desirable prize for the winner. It's the kind of opportunity every young fashion designer dreams of. The winner will be able to display their work publicly in front of established designers and thousands of potential customers. It's not just for dress designers. Milliners, stylists and photographers also competed. I think for one it's just amazing to see your design walked on the runway. You know, you sketch and you find fabric and you sew the designs, but to see it on a model and to see it come to life is an amazing thing. Some designers want to expose their work to a wider social media audience. So I'm currently trying to build my brand over Instagram so I can get followers and then later next year I'm starting a website. So hopefully it just creates more of a buzz. Others want to design for editorials. I'm focusing mostly on the high fashion, the fashion um, that you can wear to the races. Today's winners will display their entries in the Winter Garden from the 9th of October. Members of the public will then be able to vote for their favourites. Winners from each category will be announced at the end of October. Vivian Topalovich, QT News. Australia, Thunderboxes are go. The search is on for the greatest backyard dunny. The throne in the yard was a staple of Australian homes before suburbs were sewered. Today, Queensland Urban Utilities launched the Canny campaign. They are looking for photos, memories and funny outhouse stories from across the country. And we're hoping that we'll be able to display these photos and memories in Australia's first museum, which we're going to be setting up at our innovation centre at Luggage Point Sewage Treatment Plant. They want to preserve the historic icons before they are flushed away into history. It's less than six months to the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. Now schools across the country are being encouraged to get their boogie on with the game's mascot, Barobi. And the new dance challenge got off to an enthusiastic start in Brisbane. Strut your stuff and get fit. That's the message Borobi the koala has for school children across Australia. Today, the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games mascot launched the official Borobi Boogie Dance at Petrie Terrace State School. This really is about the long-term legacy of the Commonwealth Games and encouraging our young Queenslanders to be fit and active. And there's no more enjoyable way to get fit and active than to dance. Students love the idea. He was really cool and he seemed very energetic. I thought he was really cute and very friendly. Um, I'm looking forward to the swimming, athletics and netball. Teachers are being asked to record their students performing the dance, then upload it to their Facebook page. Some suggestions for dancers include organising flash mobs and challenging other schools to dance-offs. Perhaps the Borrowby Boogie will become the next internet sensation. 
The minister is hoping the idea really takes off. And look, we actually want all Australian schools to get behind it. I mean, Borrowby is such a great character. The Borrowby Boogie is an easy dance that anyone can do and we want all school children to get involved. The games kick off on April 4 and if today's song and dance is anything to go by, it's going to be one hell of a party. Dominic Elsom, QUT News. Updating our main story, the FBI says Australian Mary Lou Danley remains a person of interest in their investigation into the Las Vegas massacre. And they haven't ruled out that the killer Stephen Paddock had help planning the atrocity. And ahead on QUT News, the surefire way to get a smoker to butt out. US President Donald Trump has visited Las Vegas to express the nation's sorrow and shock over the deadliest mass shooting in recent history. The President and First Lady met families who lost loved ones and survivors of the massacre. President Trump visited the University Medical Center to meet with families, first responders and medical professionals. He also met victims of the tragedy. We met patients that were absolutely terribly wounded and the doctors, the nurses, all of the people at the hospital have done a, a job that's indescribable. Stephen Paddock, the 64-year-old shooter, opened fire on the 20,000 attendees at a country music festival. <laughs> Hundreds of mourners continue to come together to pay tributes to those killed. And the patience, the bravery, some uh, were very, very badly wounded, and they were badly wounded because they refused to leave. They wanted to help others because they saw people going down all over. And uh, it's an incredible thing to see. this tremendous bravery. Meanwhile, in Australia, sisters of Paddock's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, have no spoken one. of their shock and horror. Mary Lou Danley is my sister. She's a good person and gentle soul, a mother. A grandmother, a sister, a friend. They say they were surprised, but grateful she flew to the Philippines two weeks ago. He sent her away so that he can plan what he's planning without interruptions. In that sense, I thank him for sparing my sister's life, but that won't be to compensate the 59 people's yeah. life. Charmaine Mifsud, QUT News. US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says he's never considered resigning amid allegations from NBC News he called Donald Trump a moron. The president dismissed the story as fake news. Rex Tillerson reaffirmed his support for President Donald Trump, denying allegations Vice President Mike Pence had to talk him out of resigning after a rift between the pair. The vice president has never had to persuade me to remain as secretary of state because I have never considered leaving this post. NBC News reported Tillerson openly labelled the president a moron after a Pentagon meeting in July. They also said Tillerson took umbrage with the president's politicised speech to the Boy Scouts of America, an organisation Tillerson once led. He didn't deny calling the president a moron, but there was no sign of animosity from Tillerson yesterday. He loves his country. He puts Americans and America first. He's smart. In textbook fashion, President Trump responded on Twitter, calling it fake news. He also hit out at NBC, branding them a disgrace and more dishonest than CNN. American, Bryce Heaton, QUT yeah, News. A prototype structure that could become the Trump wall between the US and Mexico has started being built. U.S. Customs and Border Protection have reported workers and earth movers have been seen working at the site close to an already established border fence. The plan is that the four nine-metre-high walls will be finished by the end of the month. British Prime Minister Theresa May has been left red-faced after her keynote address to the annual Conservative conference became a shambles. It was supposed to offer party act activists a renewal of conservative values. Instead, it left them in hysterics. She started off strong. And it's the Conservative Party that has a vision of an open, global, self-confident Britain. But the British PM's keynote speech only went downhill. She was interrupted by British comedian Simon Brodkin, who handed her a P45 letter, a document given to employees when they leave their jobs. Brodkin, 
known for making fun of politicians, was escorted out of the conference, claiming he was asked by Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson to give the note. But Bor Boris, please say you did this. You asked me to. And now she soldiered on, only to find herself in the middle of a coughing fit. Her loyal followers encouraged her to continue with a standing ovation. <coughs> Thank you. One supporter offering a throat lozenge. To top things off, letters began to fall from the wall behind her, confusing the message of her party slogan. The 61-year-old finished her address, saying she didn't mind being called the Ice Maiden. Laura Frendon, QUT News. A suicide bomb attack in Libya has killed four people and wounded 39 others. Bomb disposal experts defused a car packed with explosives following the attack at a court complex in Mislata. Islamic State claimed responsibility, saying it targeted one of the most prominent strongholds of Libya. Rescue crews in Mexico City have salvaged the last body trapped under rubble from the September 19 earthquake. The major quake killed more than 300 people. The largest search and rescue operation took place at a collapsed office building, where nearly 50 bodies were buried. Authorities had initially given teams 72 hours for the operation, but public outcry allowed it to extend for more than a fortnight. Mexico's Civil Protection Agency informed the president the last missing body was returned to the family. The Mexican president, Enrique Peña Nieto, has sent his condolences to the family of those lost. With no further reports of missing people, President Nieto has promised they will rebuild. Ashley Press, QUT News. The 2017 Nobel Prize for Chemistry has been awarded to a trio of scientists. The Swiss, American and British scientists' work was vital in studying the Zika virus at the atomic level. The disease caused a brain damage epidemic in Brazilian babies last year. Well, it's, uh, it has opened a completely new window into how, how biological molecules work. The trio were awarded 1.4 million Australian dollars for their findings. A smoker in Bulgaria has been taught a lesson he's not likely to forget. The man was smoking next to his car at a petrol station while other drivers filled their tanks. The station attendant asked him to put the cigarette out. When the man refused, the attendant picked up the fire extinguisher and with no warning, doused the smoker and his car in foam. The man's passenger was forced to leap out to breathe fresh air. Star Kangaroos player Darius Boyd has been ruled out of the World Cup due to a hamstring injury. And Roos prop Andrew Fafita ignited a bombshell, defecting to play for Tonga. Fafita's risking a lot. The Kangaroos are the World Cup favourites. That means a potential $50,000 winning paycheck for each player. And it could jeopardise any chance the star prop has at playing for the Kangaroos and Blues in the future. Fafida's defection follows Jason Tamalolo turning his back on New Zealand for Tonga. The Kiwis coach remains positive. We have made some strong decisions. We will have 100% commitment from the players we have selected. In AFL news, former Swans assistant coach Stuart Dew is the new coach of the Gold Coast Suns. He's signed a three-year deal to replace the sacked Rodney Ede. Gold Coast limped to second last place this year and have never done better than 12th in their six seasons. Charmaine Mifsud, QUT News. Day one of practice at Bathurst 1000 has claimed its first victim. Holden supercar driver Tim Slade was the first to crash in a three-lap run on Mount Panorama. That's just before the dipper. It's at the bottom of the S's. It's a brutal part of the racetrack. There is nowhere to go. The fastest time of the session was taken out by 2014 champ Chaz Mostet. Madison Scott has all the weather details next. And the muddy rescue with a happy ending. Hello, time to take a look at the weather. It was a lovely sunny day across the River City and tonight should be rain free. Around the southeast, Brisbane reached a top of 28 today. 
It was also a sunny day on the Gold and Sunshine coasts. Ipswich was the warmest day with the top of 29. Across the nation tomorrow, if you're heading to Sydney or Melbourne, bring an umbrella as showers are expected. Canberra, Adelaide and Perth will be partly cloudy. Another warm day in Darwin, a top of 33. Back to Queensland now and showers are predicted for Cairns tomorrow. The clouds should be hanging around in Townsville, Mackay and Rockhampton. Mount Isa and Longreach should expect some heavy rain, which is great news for the farmers. On Moreton Bay, expect north to northeasterly winds at around 15 to 20 knots. Seas will be around one metre. Sunrise will be at 5.23 and sunset is at 5.50. Pleasant beach weather for both coasts tomorrow. The Goldie mostly sunny with a top of 26. Cloudy and 27 degrees for the Sunshine Coast. Brisbane's outlook across the weekend. There will be a gusty storm tomorrow with a top of 30. And more showers for both Saturday and Sunday. That's the weather for now. Back to you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Madison. A Zimbabwe gamekeeper has trekked through mud and high water to save a stricken impala. The footage was filmed a year ago but has only just emerged online. The keeper stripped down to the waist and waded into the muck to save the helpless animal. After several attempts to calm the impala and pull it out by its neck, he realises it's stuck too deeply. Finally, the keeper is able to free the animal's legs. He then carefully wraps his safety line around its front hooves. The ranger's companions, high and dry on the shoreline, then pull them both through the mud to safety. A quick clean of its face and the animal bounds back to its herd with a little encouragement. Dominic Elsom, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.